welcome to the class in last class we were seeing about the centrifugal compressor we are going to continue the same topic for discussion we had seen that in a centrifugal compressor there is one impeller and then there is a diffuser and then there is a volute casing the initially flow gets tangential velocity through the impeller which further gets diffused into the diffuser and casing to give the further pressure rise we had seen that the work input for the compressor was c w2 u2 minus c w1 u1 this was an ideal work input required to give desired pressure rise hence here we have also seen that due to the slip factor this work input gets altered and then we get a formula c w 2 u 2 minus c w 1 u 1 into sigma this slip factor was mainly due to the inertia of the air to follow the tangential velocity at the impeller sections further this work input would get altered due to the friction or also called as windage windage or friction loss alter the work input and then we get work input as sigma into psi so this is psi which is called as power input factor so psi sigma into cw2 u2 minus cw1 u1 where psi is called as power input factor it is called as power input factor psi has a range of around 1.035 to 1.04 so this is the work input for a compressor which we need to evaluate from the velocity diagram but we know thermodynamically wc is equal to cp into t03 minus t01 where T01 is total temperature at the inlet to the impeller and T03 is the total temperature in the after the diffuser where we have pressure risen the desired value so this becomes equal to psi sigma cw2 u2 minus cw1 u1 so we can calculate delta T0 stage which is T03 minus T01 is equal to psi sigma divided by Cp into Cw2u2 minus Cw1u1 for a special case we of radial veins we can have formula for this delta T0 s stage temperature rise as u2 square into psi sigma cp this is for only radial veins where cw2 is equal to u2 and basically cw2 is equal to psi u2 and then we have cw1 is equal to 0 which is without any swirl at the inlet having said this we calculated the stage temperature rise a general formula or a special formula further we will proceed to find out the pressure rise so we are working now for pressure rise in case of a centrifugal compressor here we know that our centrifugal compressor is in this way where we have this as impeller and then this is a diffuser 
and flow goes in radial direction here and gets diffused in the diffuser so this is diffuser this is impeller this diameter is half di this is radius and this is half dh or this i is also at the hub so this is called as hub of the impeller so this is called as hub of the impeller so diameter of the hub of the impeller is dh so radius is half dh this is called as tip of the impeller so this is dt is the diameter so dt by 2 is the radius and then we have this which is exit of the impeller so radius is d2 by 2 and this is vanless space we were saying 1 at the eye of the impeller here it is 1 for us which is midway between hub and tip and then we have 2 here and we have 3 outside which is up after the diffuser and in the volute casing so after this the flow would go into the casing and this impeller rotates with omega angular velocity now here we know that if suppose we take isentropic compression then p naught 3 upon p naught 1 is equal to t naught 3 dash upon t naught 1 bracket raised to gamma upon gamma minus 1 however here we are interested to find out the pressure rise to evaluate the pressure rise we should know this temperature where t naught 3 is the isentropic temperature total temperature in the casing or after the diffuser so to evaluate that we need efficiency formula for the compressor this is compressor efficiency or also stage efficiency which is t naught 3 dash minus t naught 1 divided by t naught 3 minus t naught 1 where we know numerator represents the ideal work input and denominator represents actual work input so we have we can take t naught 1 common here and then we can have efficiency we can have efficiency first we will make use of the known things we will make use of the known things and write down the efficiency formula in the way that efficiency into t naught 3 minus t naught 1 is equal to t naught 3 dash minus t naught 1 this basically is delta t naught stage which we have already evaluated is equal to t naught 3 dash minus t naught 1 we can take t naught 1 common uh, from right hand side and so we have efficiency of the compressor divided by t naught 1 into delta t naught stage is equal to t naught 3 dash upon t naught 1 minus 1 so ultimately what we would have is t naught 3 dash divided by t naught 1 is equal to 1 plus efficiency divided by t naught 1 into delta t naught stage so this remains our formula for the temperature rise we can use this formula which is related with isentropic temperature rise for the evaluation of pressure ratio so we have p naught 3 divided by p naught 1 is equal to t naught 3 dash divided by t naught 1 bracket raised to gamma upon gamma minus 1 so knowing this 
we can write down the formula for pressure rise as P naught 3 divided by P naught 1 is equal to 1 plus efficiency of compressor into T naught 1 into delta T naught stage bracket raised to gamma upon gamma minus 1. But we have already evaluated our stage temperature ratio or rise. This we can put over here and then our formula for a special case of radial veins with no inlet swirl becomes sigma psi u2 square divided by Cp bracket raised to gamma upon gamma minus 1. If we would be interested to put the formula in general, then we can put the general formula for temperature rise and then obtain the formula for the pressure rise. Okay? So, this is the case where we can obtain the pressure rise. Here we are using the formula for isentropic relation. So, this become formula for perfect gas and which is hence the compressible fluid. For incompressible flow the formula can be obtained from thermodynamic relation which is T d s is equal to d h minus V d p which is d h minus d p by rho but process is isentropic so d h is equal to d p by rho which is in terms of total enthalpy d h naught is equal to d p naught by rho so we have d p naught is equal to rho d h naught and we know rho d h naught is rho c p into delta t naught s and then this formula becomes rho c p so this formula becomes rho c p into delta t naught s and we have already found out delta t naught s as sigma psi u2 square upon c p so this c p c p gets cancelled and we get rho psi sigma u2 square so this is the pressure rise for the incompressible flow and this formula what we have derived is the pressure rise for compressible flow where we have used perfect gas relation for the adiabatic process. Having said this, now we have seen what is the configuration of centrifugal compressor, how to find out work input for the centrifugal compressor, accounting different losses, how to use this work input to find out temperature rise and then we have seen how to find out the pressure rise. Now, we will go ahead and then work for stage efficiency. This is what we have said compressor efficiency or stage efficiency is ideal work input divided by actual work input. Ideal work input was C p into T naught 3 dash minus T naught 1 and actual is C p into T naught 3 minus T naught 1, but actually we have found out work input in terms of velocity triangle. So, we can keep the ideal work input as it is and actual work input we can represent in terms of the one which we have obtained for velocity triangle which is psi sigma C w 2 u 2 minus C w 1 u 1. So, stage efficiency or compressor efficiency we can find out as C p T naught 1 and we will have T naught 3 dash upon T naught 1 minus 1 divided by psi sigma C w 2 u 2 minus C w 1 u 1. Then this we can further simplify and in terms of pressure rise 
or pressure ratio we can get the stage efficiency as rp raised to gamma minus 1 upon gamma minus 1 divided by psi sigma cw2 u2 minus cw1 u1 this formula can be further made simplified for the special case of radial veins without inlet swirl will become in the denominator psi sigma u2 square so this is how we can find out the stage efficiency for the centrifugal compressor so now we will move ahead for the next derivation which is for the degree of reaction which we are saying it as r or which we will say also as lambda so lambda in some books it is also represented as r so lambda by definition is delta h in the impeller divided by delta h naught in the stage change in enthalpy in the rotor divided by total en enthalpy change in the stage so this is the case or derivation or expression for the degree of reaction when somebody when some turbo machine is of impulse type then degree of reaction is zero when it is complete reaction based then we will have complete enthalpy rise in the rotor then degree of reaction would be one and for intermediate degrees between zero and one we have to evaluate using this expression where which says that enthalpy rise or enthalpy change in the impeller divided by total enthalpy change in the stage we should redraw the velocity triangles velocity triangle at the inlet is this way for us where we have c1 is equal to ca1 and this was v1 and this is u1 for the outlet velocity triangle this is one representative and this is v2 this is c2 and this is u2 and if we drop a normal then this becomes cr2 and complete would become cw2 we know that these are the two velocity triangles for one sample centrifugal compressor we can make use of them first we will have delta h impeller is equal to h2 minus h1 and then this we know from Euler turbine equation or turbo machinery equation is equal to half u2 square minus u1 square plus half v1 square minus v2 square knowing this we can make use to put in the expression for degree of reaction further delta h naught is known to us as cw2 into u2 for a particular case without inlet swell this is the basic work input what is given to the flow in the centrifugal compressor and that complete work input is used to rise the enthalpy so delta h naught is u2 into cw2 where enthalpy rise in the impeller is based upon the change in relative velocity and change in tangential velocity so lambda can be written as u2 square minus u1 square plus v1 square minus v2 square divided by 2 into u2 cw2 we can rearrange the terms and we can write u2 square minus v2 square plus 
v1 square minus u1 square divided by 2 into u2 into cw2 now we can go back from the to the velocity triangle and from inlet velocity triangle we can write down v1 square is equal to u1 square plus c1 square which gives us v1 square minus u1 square is equal to c1 square which is practically ca and which is further going to be cr1 square since we have constant radial velocity assumption and then from outlet velocity triangle we can write down cr2 square which is this vertical line is equal to rather plus from the outlet velocity triangle we can write down as v2 square is equal to cr2 square plus this small length and this small length is u2 this small length is cw2 minus u2 bracket square so we have v2 square is equal to cr2 square plus cw2 square plus u2 square minus twice cw2 u2 so this over here it is required as u2 square minus v2 square would become minus cr2 square minus cw2 square plus twice cw2 u2 now we have v1 square minus u1 square we have u2 square minus v2 square and this we can put in the formula for degree of reaction and then we can get u2 minus v2 square as minus cr2 square minus cw2 square plus twice cw2 u2 plus v1 square minus u1 square is cr1 square divided by twice u2 cw2 now this cr we have cr1 is equal to cr2 so this is cr1 square would get cancelled with cr2 square and then we have twice cw2 u2 minus cw2 square divided by twice cw2 u2 hence degree of reaction lambda would become equal to 1 minus half cw2 u2 so this we can further reorganize using the inlet velocity triangle where we on an outlet velocity triangle you we need to use the outlet velocity triangle here since we have both the terms cw2 u2 so outlet velocity triangle was like this where we had this as c2 so this complete was cw2 this was u2 this is v2 this is cr2 so this was one velocity triangle and then we can have this further simplified as lambda is equal to 1 minus half so we can write down cw2 as u2 so degree of reaction lambda has become 1 minus half into cw2 upon u2 where we can write down this as 1 minus half cw2 into u2 into cr2 divided by cr2 so degree of reaction lambda is equal to 1 minus half we can rearrange 
and then get CR2 divided by U2 into CW2 divided by CR2. So this can give us 1 minus 1 half. We have defined a flow coefficient which is CR2 upon U2 so that is phi 2. CW2 is this length, CR2 is vertical and this is basically alpha 2. So we have this is equal to cot of alpha 2. So now this way we can find out degree of reaction for the compressive uh, centrifugal compressor from the velocity triangles. So we have seen what are the different components of the centrifugal compressor, how the flow takes place in the centrifugal compressor with different kinds of veins, what will be the velocity triangle for the backward radial or forward veins and then we have seen how much is the pressure rise, we have seen how much is the temperature rise, also have derived the formula for stage efficiency and then we have found out what is the degree of reaction. So this is how we complete the necessary things for the centrifugal compressor. Thank you.